pale ndani ya sisi kuna kauvuta pale nyuma kuna kuona ile kuna ile kuna kuona kama so ile pale inaanza ile lafu na tano kuona kwanza kwa sababu alafu tukalipa kwa mali and God did it. And I'm very sure today, somebody prayed and asked God. And then you have to come to the university. I'm going to let you know. And we pray that God comes to you. And that's what we do. We ask God, please sustain us. But that's what we do.
We thank you for the grace that you've allowed us to have in your presence. We thank you for all the glory for your power that is supporting us. We thank you for your spirit is here with us. We pray, Jesus, for the remaining sessions of God, that your spirit will be with us, and your castle of us, that we will see our life with God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we have worshipped and we have prayed in Jesus' name. the theme of this semester. Many of you have been sharing the theme verse and we thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. So many of you until we want and I. But we thank the Lord is communicating to all of us. Praise the Lord again. Yes, so committee, are you ready? Alright. So our theme for this semester is being rooted in the Word. We can say that again. What is our theme of this semester? Being rooted in the Word. Church, what is our theme of this semester? Being rooted in the Word. Again? Being rooted in the Word. Yes. Our theme was? Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 to 7. It says, So then, just as you have received Christ Jesus as your Lord, continue to live in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith as you are taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Amen. We share the publicity for. Yeah, so this is our banner this semester. Um, first of all, our schools or our universities uh, uh, logo, that is University of Federal Christian Union. Uh, Constitution, Part C, membership, that is Article 4, uh, Sub Article 1, Subsection 1, talks about full membership, being a bona fide member of the Christian Union. So when you are accredited, when you are accredited with your admission number, uh, you are a bona fide member of the Christian Union. Then we have our our Christian Union's logo the other end. Yeah. So of course the University of Colorado Christian Union, we have our mantra here or our slogan. This is where love is more than once. Then of course the theme, the theme verse. Then of course the theme song. So, right about here, you can be able to see some uh, elements of earthly tones. Those are brown and greenish. Uh, brown representing, of course, the earth and the groundings. And uh, green representing, of course, uh, uh, growth and renewal. Yeah, so again, we have, um, we have blue. Uh, okay, this brown and, and, and greenish. Uh, they represent, of course, uh, uh, the aspect of the work, analogous to the issue of uh, being rooted uh, in the work. Then um, we have uh, some, some elements of whitish. Whitish represents purity and holiness. Um, we have blue. I believe this is sky blue. Cindy? One only. Why chromosomes? <laughs> These are, these are blue, right? Sky blue. Uh, sky blue represents uh, the aspect of God's word and wisdom. And also, blue is also associated to uh, spirituality and trust. Uh, we also have um, 
they have the greenery, as I, as I said before, that is, uh, uh, represents elements of vitality in the land. Praise Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Then, of course, we can see the tree there, that is the big oak tree. Uh, of course, you cannot be able to see the, the roots, but the roots are there, up on the ground. Um, it uh, represents a Christian measure, mature, the faith, establishing its roots in the world. When it's just a good. Then we also have, of course, the tree is flourishing, representing a Christian who is spiritually grown. So the, uh, the Christian is expected to be uh, mature in the faith. And of course, we can also see an, uh, an old Sabit wearing Jama Mechambua Biblia Missouri. Yeah, so it's a big old and very Bible. Uh, this one represents the aspect of the word in our lives when it was secure. Yeah, so uh, it also shows that uh, our theme is based on the word when it was secure. Yeah, the theme song, as I've said, then we can also have our, our social media accounts, that is, website. Our website is www.gvdcu.org. Then emails. I believe you shall receive some summons uh, or some info from our email. That is email that is info at you uh, or, or, or RG. Then also our Facebook account, you receive we have Instagram. See my mock on Instagram. Instagram, UACU underscore ORG. Then we have the YouTube. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel.
So we are referring to who? To Christ. Praise the Lord again. Colossians 1 uh, and verse 15. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 15. Um, he is the image, the Son is the image of the invisible God and the firstborn, firstborn of all creation. Praise the Lord again. Verse 16. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created. Praise the Lord again. So we all now agree that when we are saying we are rooted in the word, we are simply saying being rooted through Christ. Praise the Lord again. Who is, who is the word? Praise the Lord again. Yes, yeah, so when we talk of being rooted in Christ, sorry, is to be firmly and deeply grounded in scriptures with such an understanding that no one can sway us around with any kind of teachings whatsoever. Praise the Lord again. Let me repeat that. To be, uh, being rooted in the word is to be firmly and deeply grounded in scriptures with such an understanding that no one can sway us around with any kind of teachings whatsoever. It is also to learn to fully walk on the truth unveiled by the word of God. Praise the Lord again. Now, being rooted is a journey. Praise the Lord again. It is a process that we agree to walk through. Praise the Lord again. We, we, we all know, maybe an example of trees. This tree that we have seen here in our banner, you cannot compare that tree and a small wheat. Praise the Lord again. You can easily uproot a wheat, but that tree it will take a lot of energy, a lot of resources for you to uproot such a tree. Praise the Lord again. But for a wheat, you can just pluck it. Praise the Lord. When I used to feel it. So being rooted is a process of growth. Praise the Lord again. Yeah, you are uh, as a plant as, as we have said. In Anzaikiwa Kidogo, it grows and grows and grows to maturity. Praise the Lord again. So being rooted in the word is a process, is a journey. Praise the Lord again. And the Lord is so ready that we cultivate this relationship. It's because uh, for us to be rooted, it begins with the relationship with our Creator. Praise the Lord again. It begins with us having, establishing a relationship. Praise the Lord again. A relationship with our Creator. Praise the Lord again. And the Lord is so ready that we may have that relationship with Him. Yes, we can see in the book of James, and um, chapter 4 and verse 8, James chapter 4 and verse 8, we see the desire of God. Praise the Lord again. Yes, and we know the book of James is written not to address any church, but to address the 12 tribes that were scattered all over. Praise the Lord again. So, here he is saying, come near to God and he will come near. Yeah. Of course, wash your hands, you sinners and purify. But I want us to focus on the part of it. Come near to God and he will come near. Yeah. Other version says that draw closer to God and he will. So, it is a way, two-way traffic. Praise the Lord. Yes, the Lord is so ready to receive us and he is waiting for us to draw near to him, that he draws near to us. Praise the Lord again. Psalms 25 and verse 14. This is just to, to see the expectation of God or the desire of God in our lives. Praise the Lord again. Psalms 25 and verse 14. Yes, the Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. Praise the Lord again. In King James Version, the Bible said, says that the friendship of the Lord is with those that fear Him. Praise the Lord. If we have the King James Version, we can look into that. that the friendship of the Lord 
So Lisa, uh -huh. my version, I don't know who my version is. <laughs> I think it is new King James, so yeah, we can confirm. But it says that the friendship of the Lord is with them that praise the Lord again. This is to see that the Lord is always ready. The qualification is to have the fear of God. Praise the Lord again. So the Lord is so ready that we cultivate this relationship with Him all, all of our days. Praise the Lord again. Yes, and uh, also in Jeremiah 33 and verse 3, we also see the Lord uh, calling us. Praise the Lord again. Yes, and He is saying, Call unto me and I will answer you. I tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Praise the Lord. You see, He's always ready. Praise the Lord again. He's telling us, call unto me. Have that fellowship with me. Praise the Lord again. That friendship. Praise the Lord. For example, you, you have a friend. Do you share all your secrets with just anyone? No, you don't. Praise the Lord again. You find someone whom you have trusted, and that is the person that you share your deep secrets with. Praise the Lord again. You cultivate that friendship, you cultivate that trust. It's the same with our God. Praise the Lord again. So He's calling us to have that friendship that we may be established in Him. Praise the Lord again. Yes, and so we must uh, be ready to cultivate that friendship with the Lord through His Word. And finally, Jeremiah 29 and verse 13. Jeremiah 29 and verse 13. <coughs> you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Praise the Lord again. That is the Lord speaking to us this morning. That we can only, uh, we will seek him and find him when we seek him with all of our hearts. Praise the Lord. And we have seen that for us to to have that friendship with the Lord, we must have that fear, that worship in other terms. Praise the Lord again. Yes, and so uh, that was just to see uh, the desire of God from us, I mean to us as his church this morning. Praise the Lord again. And so how can we be rooted in the word? How can we be established in the world? How can we be deeply established or fixed or grounded in the world? Praise the Lord again. So I thought of uh, Ezra. We all know Ezra. Praise the Lord. We have read the book of Ezra and we know how Ezra comes in. Praise the Lord. Last time, uh, of course, the Israelites had uh, gone to exile. Now they are coming back and they need us to rebuild the temple. Praise the Lord. So that was one of the issues they had. They had to rebuild the temple. And another thing was they needed to know the ordinances or yeah, the word of God. Praise the Lord. The law of Moses. Praise the Lord again. We all know the story of Babylon and how Babylon was. It was another world that did not fear God. There were people and all kinds of sin could happen in, those, in that area. Praise the Lord. They worshipped idols and all that that we know. Praise the Lord. And so in chapter 7 of the book of Ezra, we see Ezra. Praise the Lord. Yes, according to Jewish virtual library, we are told that uh, Ezra is born in 480, 480 BC. All right, and he dies in 440 BC. Praise the Lord again. And this time that we see Ezra in chapter 7, he was about 23 years of age. Praise the Lord again. So, in here we fit that age bracket of Ezra at that time. Praise the Lord again. Amen. So, we can all go to Ezra, the book of Ezra, chapter 7 and verse 6. Where we will see a brief background of Ezra. So from verse 1 it says of it explains on how he was born and all that generation. 
when we get to verse 6, it says, This Ezra came up from Babylon. He was a teacher, well versed in the law of Moses. Praise the Lord again. The law of Moses is, is in which books? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. So he was, uh, he was a teacher of these five books. That is the law of Moses. Praise the Lord which the Lord, the God of Israel, had given. The king had granted him everything he asked, for the hand of the Lord his God was. Praise the Lord again. So this is Ezra, and we see sorry, he was healed in the word of God. He was a scribe. Praise the Lord again. So you can imagine a 23-year-old having mastered the five laws, uh, the, the five Book of Lord uh, or Moses, pray the Lord again. And I, I was just imagining and thinking of how we, we when we are doing our CPR and we get to the book of Leviticus, and many of us or some of us have have done what? Have quitted to do their CPR because of the book of Leviticus. Yes, it is true, praise the Lord. But we have we have Ezra who was skilled and he could explain everything to to these people. Pray the Lord again. Now, what was, that was the background of Ezra. I want us to read in the book of, of course, Ezra, now verse 10, the same chapter 7, and we see Ezra. For us to be established in the word of God, for us to be rooted, there are things that we can learn from Ezra. Pray the Lord again. Yes, the book of Ezra, chapter 7 and verse 10. We all read. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much. For Ezra had devoted. And that is where we get our first point and our first lesson. And that is commitment to reading the word of God. For us to be rooted, we must be committed. Praise the Lord again. I searched in other versions and I saw the words that are used in place of devoted. And I saw that Ezra had prepared his heart in, in one of the versions. In, in King James Version, in Amplified, it says, Ezra had set his heart, praise the Lord, and in NLT, he was determined. Praise the Lord again. What has he feeling? So, we must be committed. For us to grow or to be rooted in the Word of God, we must be committed. Commitment. Praise the Lord again. We must set our, our, our hearts. Praise the Lord again. You just decide and you say, from now on, I will read my Bible, I will be consistent. I'm not quitting. Praise the Lord again. Amen. Yes, Leviticus is one of the books that has some challenges here and there. Praise the Lord. So many of them. But you commit yourself. Praise the Lord again. Uh, when I was in first year, someone told me, when I got to Leviticus, he, he told me, you just read. You might not get anything from there, but just read. Consistency. Praise the Lord again. Be consistent. Praise the Lord again. Yes, when you are committed, you are consistent. Praise the Lord again. It is also an issue of us being intentional. Praise the Lord again. To be intentional with the word of God. Reading the word. Praise the Lord again. Every day, day in and day out. Actually, we can read Joshua 1 8 and we see what Joshua is being encouraged of. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and we all read day and that you may observe to do according to all that is written. Therein. For then you shall make prosperous and then you shall have good success. Praise the Lord again. You shall meditate on this. On, on what? We can have verse 7. Verse 8, sorry. Uh, 
Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Praise the Lord again. We meditate on the word of God day and night. That is consistency. That requires someone who was intentional to meditate on it. Praise the Lord again. Amen. Day in and day out. Praise the Lord again. Yes, and and it is possible. Praise the Lord again. When I saw Stephen, it is possible for us to, to do that. Psalms 1 and verse 1 to 2. Psalms chapter 1 and verse 1 to 2. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. But whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law. Praise the Lord again. It is a decision that you make, praise the Lord, to meditate on the word of God. Day and night, always, all the time. Yes, and I was thinking, sometimes like today or any other, fellowship that we meet either on Friday in our Bible study or in our meetings, in our ministries. You find that we meet and we fellowship. Or even you have your devotions in the morning. But it becomes hard to meditate on the Word of God because of the things that we bring into our life. Praise the Lord. Some of the platforms, praise the Lord again. Unasoma neno, unabarikiwa, unabarikiwa, unaingia, what's up? Praise the Lord again. And the means that you find, they just pollute <laughs> everything that you have received from the Lord. Praise the Lord again. It is for us to guard and to make sure that this word finds a good soil as we see in the, uh, the parable of the sour. Praise the Lord. That the word may find a path or a good soil in our hearts that it may grow the 30 fold, 60 fold, and a hundred. Praise the Lord again. So it is for us to guard. To nabarikiwa, unapata, unatoka, and Netflix. Pollutes everything. Praise the Lord again. And the word of God can no longer bear fruits in us. And that is how many of our of Christians remain stagnant. Praise the Lord again. And every Sunday you feel like giving your life to Christ every time. Praise the Lord again. Why? Because at some point we fail to allow the word of God bear fruits in our lives. Praise the Lord again. So it is a matter of the heart. You decide and you say, no matter what, I must. Praise the Lord. My surrounding, my background must be influenced by the word of God. Praise the Lord again. And consistency is not easy. Praise the Lord again. We must note that. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 11, we see that consistency is not easy. To cultivate a discipline is not easy. Praise the Lord again. Yes, we can all read. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained. Praise the Lord again. It is painful. Praise the Lord again. It is not easy to wake up, to set a time and you say, me, I'll be waking up at 4 a.m. to just do my devotion. Praise the Lord again. Before you cultivate, it is not easy, before you cultivate that, you'll have some days you wake up and you just give yourself some excuses. You're like, I turn to learn a retreat, to choka. And you, you just tell yourself that and that is how you sleep. Praise the Lord again. And here in a Peter, you go to your meeting, if you're in a committee and you're like, your, your leader asks you, did you do your devotion? And you're like, lakini jana you a retreat. And consistency in a potea. Praise the Lord again. And yes, you will have so many reasons to, to, do, to make you feel today, apana. Praise the Lord again. Bona is a So before uh, the, uh, cultivating a discipline is not pleasant at the time, it cannot. Sometimes it, it will not make sense to you. Praise the Lord again. But please, I ask us this morning that you may be consistent. Praise the Lord again. That grace is there. 
Praise the Lord again to be consistent. Praise the Lord again. Number two, we go back to Ezra 7 and verse 10. Uh, so our first uh, lesson was he was devoted, he had set his heart. Number two is, uh, yes, uh, for Ezra had devoted himself to the study and observance of the law of the Lord. Praise the Lord. That simply means, I can read uh, uh, my version here, what uh, observance in simple words means. For Ezra has set his heart to study the law of the Lord and to do it. Praise the Lord again. And to do it. As simple as that. And to do it. Living the word of God. Praise the Lord again. The word of God is practi practical. Praise the Lord again. The word of God is doable. Something that you can do. Praise the Lord again. It is not just believing in faith and now living the faith. Uh, living the faith and doing our own things. Praise the Lord again. James chapter 1 and verse 22. See what Paul, uh, uh, James is saying. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. 23. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forget what he looks like. Praise the Lord again. Verse 25. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives the law and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Praise the Lord again. This morning the word is encouraging us from Ezra and even from James. Praise the Lord again. That we be doers of the word. That is how the word can be practical in our lives. You read, uh, you read the word and you practice it. Praise the Lord again. Buona Yesu Sihiwe. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, you see, well, why? Uh, how can we, or why should we practice this word? Praise the Lord again. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, chapter 3, 16 to 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for one, doctrine, two, reproof, uh huh. Instruction in righteousness. Praise the Lord again. That's the man of God. May be perfect, thoroughly furnished to all good work. Yes, we can all read with oomph. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished to all good works. Praise the Lord. Amen. Who is the man of God here? I. Yes, we are not referring to a certain pastor out there. It is addressing us, praise the Lord again, okay, that we might be, that the man of God may be perfect, that and furnished to all good work. Praise the Lord again. Amen. Yeah, so the word of God uh, is of benefit to us, praise the Lord again, for teaching, to teach us what is right, praise the Lord again, for rebuking us, when you think you're doing something right, the word of God. Praise the Lord again. And you are taught the, the, the right way. And also for correcting and training in righteousness. The last uh, uh, lesson that we learn from Ezra, in Ezra 7.10, is teaching his word. Praise the Lord again. So one is committing your heart to reading the word of God. Number two is to practice the word. Number three is now teaching. Praise the Lord again. Yes, we, all of us might not get the platforms of holding a microphone somewhere in a crusade or in a church to preach the word, but our lives teach the word. In that classroom, praise the Lord. Amen. 
Yes, uh, you don't, we don't need uh, to have those big platforms that we see other people having for us to teach the word. Colossians 3 and verse 16. Colossians 3 and verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. The mouth speaketh. That is that which is in you, that is what you will speak. Praise the Lord again. Amen. Yes, as uh, the church of you we can teach the word of God in so many ways. Praise the Lord again. As we can see in First Timothy 4 and verse 12. Yes, uh, this is Paul addressing his spiritual son, that is Timothy. Yes, let no man despise your youth, but be you an example uh, to the believers in word or in speech. Praise the Lord. Yeah. In conversation or in? Yes, in charity, in spirit, in faith and in purity. So in peace, as we have said, out of the abundance of the heart. That is what you will speak. Praise the Lord again. And I urge us this morning by the grace of God that we we make it a routine. You know we speak in so many platforms. Yes, praise the Lord. If right now if we are to go into your WhatsApp status, can we see you speaking Jesus? Praise the Lord again. Yeah. Yes, sometimes we've had challenges of overcoming memes. By the way, memes as as funny as it sounds, it's Sometimes it takes a lot from us. Praise the Lord again. It takes a lot from us as young people and even as we, for us who are in attachments and teaching practices, you so interacted with people maybe who are in their prof professions for a longer time, but find someone <laughs> having some means and reward. Praise the Lord again. But it is possible to overcome. Praise the Lord again. Let our WhatsApp speak Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let our Facebook speak Jesus. Praise the Lord again. Let our TikTok speak Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes, let our TikTok speak Jesus. Praise the Lord again. Being born again is not uh, having certain dress code that uh, you want to show Jesus and walking in a certain way, no? Praise the Lord again. It is, I mean, your life shows, your status speaks more. Praise the Lord again. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth. Yes, in our conduct, in Colossians chapter 4 and 5, verse 5. Praise the Lord again. How you conduct yourself. When Jesus was here, let it, uh, Praise God, and that is how you will be rooted. Because what you've learned, that is how you will walk. Praise the, praise the Lord again. Yes, Colossians 5, uh, 5 verse 5. Yes, walk in wisdom toward them that are without uh, redeeming the time. Other version says, conduct, uh, walk. Okay. Be wise in the way you act. To what? I'm saying that. Make the most of every. Praise the Lord again. Yeah. Some people will just get born again by how you, mm -hmm. you just conduct yourself. You have not even said hi to them. Mm -hmm. That classmate of yours, praise the Lord again. Okay. Whom you don't, you have never even said hi to. They will love Jesus because of how you conduct yourself. Praise the Lord again. Amen. It is high time we represent Christ in all ways. Mm -hmm. And that is how we can be rooted. What he, he tells us, we do it. When I was here. Yes, you, you are you're not coming to class and you just decide to tell the class rep I'm not in class today. As simple as that. Praise the Lord again. Yes, just being uh, faithful. Praise the Lord again. The bit of this idea, you, you, you will not be uh, taking chances or missing every class because again you will not send apologies for the whole semester. <laughs> Praise the Lord again. Yes, in your conduct, in love. Praise the Lord again. First Thessalonians chapter three and verse twelve. 
This is simply how we teach the word in our lives. Praise the Lord again. In love. The Bible says, May the Lord make your love increase and overflow to each other. And for everyone. And for whom? For everyone else. Praise the Lord again. If you're correcting, if you're teaching in love to everyone in the church. Praise the Lord again. Amen. And in faith and also in purity. Praise the Lord again. Amen. Because of time, allow me just to mention the verses and then you can confirm. So, we can teach in faith. You can refer to Colossians chapter 1 and verse 4. And also in purity, it's a verse that we all know, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 to 20, referring to our bodies, that our bodies are the temple, the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord again, that we are bought with a price. Let's, our, what we do, whatever we do with this body, represent Christ. Praise the Lord again. That is how be rooted. And also, the purity of heart. Praise the Lord again. In Matthew 5, 8, the Bible says, that blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. The purity of heart. You can address someone and they just feel good and blessed. Praise the Lord again. Amen. The other time we learned in the Bible study the gift of encouragement. Praise the Lord again. Amen. How many of us were in the Bible study? Oh my. Please make sure that you belong to one of your Bible studies. Yes. We continue to learn. So, from Ezra we have learned three lessons. Commitment to reading the word. Praise the Lord. Yes. And practicing the word. And now teaching the word. Praise the Lord again. Another way that you can be rooted, and that is the final one, is through fellowship. Mm. Praise the Lord again. Mm. Hebrews in chapter 10, verse 24 to 25. Hebrews 10. And let us consider how we may spur uh, one another on toward love and good deeds. Uh -huh. Next. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. Praise the Lord again. Amen. So there are some who are in the habit of, <laughs> of not meeting. Praise the Lord again. Amen. But encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. Praise the Lord again. Let's not get tired. It is in the Bible study that we learn the word of God. Praise the Lord. It is in this fellowship, in ministries, in ethics. That we learn the word of God. Praise the Lord again. The more we learn, the more we cultivate that friendship with the Lord, the more we we are established and firmly established in His word. Praise the Lord again. And also the last one, yes, that we can be rooted is through prayer. Praying the word. The best prayer. <laughs> sorry. The best prayer that we can make is prayer that is full of the word. Praise the Lord again. Do you know that you can make stories in prayer? Someone said that uh, sometimes God is not moved by your tears. Praise the Lord again. Yes, but when you approach the throne of grace with the word, what he has said in his word, praise the Lord. We have just sung here that he has honored his word more than his name. The Lord has honored his word more than his name. So when you pray the word of God, that is how you you cultivate that consistency. Praise the Lord again. Amen. That that's that uh, aspect of knowing the word. Praise the Lord. Yes, and uh, memorizing it in you. Praise the Lord again. Amen. Yes. Uh, reasons why we should be rooted, as we are nearing to the end. Why should we be rooted? Number one, as we saw when we were beginning this fellowship, uh, this some um, um, service, of course, is. It is the will of God that we may know Him. Praise the Lord. We read in Psalms 25 and verse 14 that the friendship of the Lord is with those that fear Him. It is His will. Draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Call out to me and I will show you great and mighty things. So it is the desire of the Lord. It is the will of God that we may be established in Him. Number two, why we should be rooted is to overcome challenges and some temptations that comes our way. Praise the Lord again. Amen. The best example is Christ Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. Yes, we see Jesus after coming from the, ma the mountain where he fasted for 40 days and he meets who? The devil. Praise the Lord. Yes, so uh, verse 3. 
The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. We can see in verse 4. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes. It is. Tell your neighbor, it is. Now ask them, Where is it written? And please, they should give you an answer. Because Jesus said, It is written. That man shall not live by bread alone, but on the every word that comes from the mouth of God. So why is it written? It is written in Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 3. Jesus knew the word. That is how the word helps us. Praise the Lord again. Amen. Yes, a, a, a preacher some time back came here and gave us a testimony. And I want to remind us. And she said at some point she was so sick, nearly to death. Praise the Lord. And she had her voice, her uh, voice in, uh, a voice in, uh, the voice said, Ati, blessed, there is a verse that says that, blessed is the man, or oh, oh, God delights in the death of the Alpha, of his servant, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, yes, it is in Psalms, I cannot trace it now, but it is written, <laughs> praise the Lord again. And now, another verse, you see, it is the word, the devil knows the word, as we shall see here, praise the Lord. But, he was also reminded of the word that says, I will satisfy you with long life. With long life, I will satisfy you. That is in Psalm 91 and I think verse 11. Or, oh, yes, Psalm 91 there. Praise the Lord. So you know the word and you apply it to overcome some challenges. Praise the Lord again. Without the word, the devil will speak to you and you might easily give in. Yes, we continue in 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 the yes, and now this is uh, the chapter. He said, "If you are the son of God, he said, though throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels." You see what the devil is saying? For it is written. He knows the word. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Where is it written? In Psalms 91 and verse 11. Praise the Lord again. That is what is written. What the Jesus knew, that he will command his angels concerning you. There it is, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all of your ways. Next, 12. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot. So that is the devil telling Jesus. When I was feeling. Suppose Jesus didn't know the word. You, see, you, you know you can be easily convinced. Praise the Lord again. But what does he tell him in uh, Matthew 4 7? Matthew 4 7. Yes, Jesus answered him. It is also written. So he tells you it is written, tell him, it is also written. Do not put the Lord your God to test. That is in where? Deuteronomy 6 and verse 16. Praise the Lord again. So you know the word and the word will help you in such times. Because those times will come. Praise the Lord again. Kini 
हो यो 